What is equally as important as the sounds that we pick for our song? Well, I think that sequencing and stitching together those sounds to make a nice arrangement is pretty high up on that list. What's up guys, Oracular Music back again with another Akai MPC video, and today we're going to be having a look at sequencing on the Akai MPC, grid mode, song mode, all that stuff, anything that's going to help you guys turn those ideas into finished tracks. Let's get into it. If you're watching this video today, I can maybe assume that you're just starting out with your MPC or you have been playing around with it for a while and you're just looking at getting some more insight on how to build up your track and how the sequencer works and getting those sounds together into a cohesive arrangement uh, to get to your finished product. So first off, we're going to look at our main screen here. Um, if you look here, we start off at the top with our sequences, which are made up of tracks which are filled with information from the programs you use in those tracks. So in other words, you start with your sections of your song, and then the layers that exist in those sections, and then the sounds that you build those layers with, whether that's a program, a plugin, a key group, or what have you. Whichever you choose to make up your track will live here in the program section. So just for demonstration of this video, I do have some sequences developed here just to um, give you an idea of how to stitch those together. But for now, if you are completely new and you're just wondering how to get sounds into a sequence and onto the sequencer, we will have a look at that. So I'll go to an empty sequence, and then I will have an empty track. And then for that track, I do have a plugin loaded up to record onto that track. So in order to lay down something on your sequencer, we will need to have a look at the full view here, and I will show you how to record that in. So you're going to hit your record button and play start. So we can see that it automatically looped. We see in our timeline here, this white line. I'll play that again as I'm talking just to show you. We can see it, and once that hits, it will loop back. And how soon that decides to loop back is based off of how many bars your sequence consists of. So we've laid down a track and let's say we want to add one more or many more. What you'd want to do is create a new track still in the same sequence. So we're developing as many sounds here, layers that we want in this one sequence. So I have another track and I would select my next plugin that I would like to use, my next program. It is important to say that you would want to create a new program or put a new program in context for every new track. So again, record, play start. Now you'll notice after you record and it goes through the amount of bars and it loops back as we mentioned, you'll immediately switch over to overdub mode here. And overdub, that is when you would want to say you liked what you recorded but you'd like to add a few more notes in there or layer on top of that without having to re-record or lose what you've already done. So let's have a look at that. If you hit record and play start, it will wipe out what you've already done. Overdub, play start will allow you to, to layer over it. Up 
always be sure after you're done recording to come down and make sure that your record or overdub lights are not on so you don't lose what you've done. So now that we have that, you might be asking yourself, I can hear everything that's happening, but where's the actual information that's telling those sounds to play and when? That's what you'll have control over inside of the grid edit, which you will find in my case right here on the quick toggles on the side. I think by default yours may be there as well. So we're going to go inside there and we're met with what a screen that might be familiar to some of you guys and that's our MIDI, our MIDI data and our piano roll. Okay. So the grid edit will show you the MIDI notes of your program and where they sit on the grid and inside the sequence. You can adjust where the notes are played by using our little grab tool here and sort of highlighting the notes that you wish. And you have a function here called nudge. And we can move those around on the grid as we wish. Um, you can also adjust how long the notes are with your editing start or end points. Grab it and adjust it that way. Okay. Um, you can also adjust the velocity at which the notes are played at. We can see it's set to velocity here. Bring up your arrow there and we're met with another little section on the bottom that pops up here. So whichever notes you grab with the grabber here will be highlighted at the top and then you will select your function that you you wish so velocity in this case we'll get into more maybe in another video about applying different things in this section to get control over your your notes that way with some automation and different effects but for now we're looking at velocity which is a pretty important factor in creating dynamics and recording with your plugins so or drums for that matter um, make sure you're on the automation tab when we're adjusting the velocity and we'll grab our notes and we can see that our velocity is moving up and down there from 127 down. So grid edit, very important, lots of functions in there. So talking about um, notes landing on the grid inside the sequencer, accuracy is one thing, but here is where you want to explore time control. So in my case, on my MPC, I do have a quick function here, TC. You can find that in the menus as well, or you have, may have a dedicated button depending on which MPC you have. So there you can see global timing correction is on, and it's at 1 16th notes. Okay. So you're going to see we have different time signatures here. Electronic or digitally produced music heavily relies on the use of time control to snap those MIDI notes into the grid. And you see the different signatures there. The higher you set this, the more increments you have for notes in between each measure. And the more precise you can be. And the lower that you set it, the easier your hits may find its place on the grid and leave less room for error, for lack of a better term. I'll show you what I mean with some hi-hats here in a second. Um, we will start with maybe one eighth, eighth notes. So I'm going to create, I still have the same sequence and context that we were just working with. I'm going to create a new track. And I'm going to go to a program this time as opposed to a plugin. Program. And I do have some drums here. Okay. So if we go back to our grid, we see it's empty because we are on a new track and a new program. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit some hi-hats in and I'm going to hit do a little trill, a little quick uh, run there. And you'll see that the notes do not properly lay in the way that I hear them. And that's because I'm at one eighth notes, but I'm hitting them in quicker increments than the eighth note time control allows them to fall. There's no place for them to fall into. So I'll demonstrate that. So 
So you can hear right away, it is not playing back what I recorded, and that is because I am not allowing myself enough increments on the grid with the eighth notes to for those notes to fall into. So if I quickly go to back to time control and go up to 164, 64 notes, hit do it, and then I can quickly use my grabber as I've showed you, grab them, hit my eraser tool, and get rid of those right quick. So now that we're on 64th notes, I have much more spots on my grid for the notes to fall into. So let's do that same little pattern and you'll see it will pick it up. Right? So I'll zoom in a little bit there. Now you can even see the lines on the grid, how much smaller those increments are. If I move with our nudge, if I move around, you can see all the little sections that I can drop that into. Now, if I go back to the eighth notes, much less increments for me to play with. Little tip while we're at it, you can also hold in the note repeat button and lay them down like this and jump between the time divisions and you can hold in your hi-hat and note repeat and record them um, right in on the grid perfectly without having to punch them in. I'll show you what that looks like and sounds like. Note repeat held in, record. And our time division's here. Very handy if you're into that um, trappy trill kind of sound, um, and handy otherwise, but just thought I'd mention that. So we also have the option to record off the grid, as they say. Um, you really need to be on time when punching in your notes, or, or at least get close, which is what somebody may want to do if they're trying to get a more human, less robotic, or natural swing feel to their recordings. You can see here with notes recording off the grid, that you will be able to freely move the MIDI notes anywhere and not snap in at any point to a certain time division. So we'll want to zoom in there. We'll want to go into time control. And we will turn global timing correct off. So all of this beneath that now is irrelevant. It does not apply. So now let me play a little um, a little drum section here off the grid. You can already hear I'm all over the place. It sounds very sloppy, but you can really learn how to hone in on that and work that to your advantage, uh, especially if you wanted to um, you know, like I said, a more human feel. Uh, you can see that I can move my notes now completely free. They are not locked into that grid whatsoever. So you could actually record like that uh, for a more natural sound and then go in and further adjust that to exactly where you wanted it. Um, you can change this back and forth depending on what you're trying to lay down for your track as needed. Now that we have a little grasp on that, we'll go back to our main screen here and continue looking at our song. This is our main screen where everything happens. Um, learning the inside outs and all the functions of that is, is pretty crucial. Um, so now what I would like to do is just kind of focus on the sequences that I've built for the purpose of this video. Um, it's very important to, to note that you do want to create a new program for every track. Otherwise, you'll have that new track that you're trying to make taking over what you recorded 
with that program on a previous track that uses that program. So essentially the MPC will not know what track you want the program to send the data to. Once you record a track with a program, when you create a new track, be sure to click the plus button here and add a new program, key group, plugin, whatever it is you're looking to load up. Um, if it's the same plugin that you wish to use again on a new track, say it's this Fabric XL harpsichord, we would just, you could either duplicate the program, so now we have another instance of it, and it will allow us not to interfere with the original, or you can simply click your plus button and choose your plugin that way. Here's my first sequence here. We'll have a listen and then we'll move on from there. So that is kind of my most full sequence that I've developed. So I've named it Hook. Um, I've gotten into the habit of naming my sequences to keep track of what information is in what so knowing that I named this hook I can almost guarantee that that's probably my most full section so when we're happy with that first sequence we can move on to the next now here is where you make some decisions do you want to build a new sequence from scratch or would you rather tweak what you've already made and add to it or take away from it in some variation for the next part of your song you could simply go back to the first one that you recorded the first sequence hit your pencil icon and duplicate the sequence copy rename it so you don't get confused because you don't want it to have the same name as the original that you're copying and I will name it duplicate for demonstration purposes and it will go to the next available open sequence which in this case is sequence 4 because I do have 1, 2, and 3 already filled but now you can hear duplicate has the same information as our first one book so why would I want to duplicate this the sequence when I already have that well from there you can mute different tracks rearrange MIDI data in the grid edit or delete it altogether or add to the sequence so I've muted my drums and I'll mute this plug in here so I'm keeping the same cadence of my song intact but I'm also making a variation there as well without having to build that again from the very beginning muting tracks and plugins inside of a different sequence like I've done does not affect the original. So in this video we have been working with four bar sequences. Um, once we get into song mode and arranging your song you can see that you could simply duplicate or, or play it twice if you wanted that part to play longer but if we wanted to take care of that right now you could get into your pencil icon and double the length. So hitting that once would turn my 4 bar into 8 bars and if I did it again it would turn my 8 bars into 16 bars and so on and by doing that um, the extra 4 bars that were added because I doubled 4 it will have the same information in those second 4 bars that were in the first so now our 4 bar loop is an 8 bar loop. We're watching our timeline at the top here. It now appears to be moving much slower because the duration of our sequence is doubled. So as I've mentioned, I have three parts recorded. I have a hook or a main section. Um, a verse and an intro so three sequences which I will give an example how to stitch those together in song mode so let's jump over there 
To get to song mode, you will go into your menu on your MPC, which on my MPC 1, the button is here for menu. And inside here, you'll find something with a little music note, and it says song. That is our song mode section. And what you'll see there is you have the names of your sequences right here. So every sequence you have in the project will appear in this screen. We have intro here, verse here, and hook here. Now, in order to get those over here in our song list, uh, that's going to be the order in which the sequences play. We will want to hit record just so we have our button lit up there. And then we can either tap on the screen the order in which we wish they would play. If you had start placing them in and you didn't like the order and you wanted to start over, you have a clear button. Start from scratch. Now, I had hit record and hit the pads on the screen here, the sections. You could also use the physical pads to input the sequences as well. Intro, hook, verse. Okay. So that is the section that I would like. Um, I'm going to stick another intro at the very end. So in this case, I feel like my intro could be used as my outro as well. So once you, it's really about developing those sequences that you're satisfied with and have all of those ready to go before you jump over into song mode. Um, so you have enough to work with to create a full track. Now we will look more into that little list there right here so we have the sequences in order and then next to it we have the amount of times that they will play so I did show you how to duplicate a sample on the main screen but you could have just as well changed that hook part that we doubled to play two times or three or four times um, so you you can do it that way and yeah so let's have a listen So that was our little song that we developed there. Um, kind of short, but obviously that's where you would decide how many sequences you were going to put in there and the length that they will be until you're satisfied with the length of your track. And from there, this is how we're going to get our song from the MPC to elsewhere. We have our export button here once, once we're satisfied with the arrangement. This is where you can decide um, a few different things. What format it's going to be, wave, MP3, whatever it may be, and the bit depth, the sample rate. And we also have audio tail here, which would be how much uh, time exists after your track ends. Um, some people, you may want that to be abrupt and have no empty space at the end. Others may want say a few seconds in case they were putting those songs into a project and wanted a little gap between their tracks um, and the you have the end bar here so all of those sequences together add up to 32 bars 
you can decide, well, I want my song to end wherever the song ends at 16 bars. Um, generally, I will have my sequence together to the point where I want it to be the full composition that I've created, so I leave that at the end bar. And you can also decide where the project starts as well. But again, I've already had my arrangement, so I like where it starts and I like where it ends, so I usually leave that as is. We have the export button down at the bottom here. We go ahead and click that, and that will take us to uh, where we decide where do we want to save that song that we've developed. So I have it called Song Mode Video here. You can name that whatever you wish. Pick my destination. I choose my terabyte there, my external drive, and I have it named. I'll go ahead and click Save. And there we have it. That was sequencing, grid edit, song mode. I hope that was helpful to somebody, whether you're someone who's just getting started here and you're wondering how to get all those sounds together into an arrangement or, you know, you've been at it and you were just looking for a little more insight on how that works. I hope that was helpful to somebody. Uh, with that being said, I will have some more videos coming in the future. Maybe we'll look more at inside the grid edit and what can be done in there. Uh, you know, many more things to come that we could touch up on. If there's anything that you'd like to see specifically, please drop that in the comments. And please feel free to like and subscribe. Um, I will say, if you are looking to engage in some discussions on all things MPC, jump over to our Facebook group, MPC Cook and Consult. Uh, we'd love to have you there. But that is all for today. Thanks for watching. Peace.